Here's the right hand side, carburetor dismantled. Everything looks fine actually at first glance. There's a, a little bit of dirt here inside these banjo fittings. That'll all clean out with the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, that's the gasket. Uh, I'm going to actually put that to one side. We're not going to use that at all. Instead, we'll have the O-ring um, that is the mating surface between the carburetor here and the spacer blocks. I'll also put the spacer blocks on and here onto a surface plate as well. I'll also check this for squareness as well. What I'm trying to do there is just check to see if there are any air leaks that could possibly affect idling or, or starting. I doubt it, but we'll, we'll check it out anyway. Um, we'll clean the jets thoroughly and then also the pilot jet in here. I'll see if I can get in there and clean that out thoroughly um, just as this first test. If, if it doesn't idle after this, um, then we'll need to go back in there again and explore other options as well. So, But otherwise, um, everything looks nice and clean. Oh yeah, um, the needle position is at the top there as well, and I'd like that to be in the middle position as well. I'm just going to bring everything back to standard factory settings, if you like, so that we, we have a new baseline with which to start when we, we try and get the bike running again. So I think that's it. And uh, what we'll do now, we'll put all these parts into the ultrasonic cleaner, give them a thorough clean, dry them off, check the jets, blow everything out with compressed air, make sure that everything's spotlessly clean, and then this one can go back on the bike. So what's happened here is, I'm sure you know, but it's been over tightened at some point that's caused this to warp. So it's not entirely flat. And you can see it sort of like hinges on these two points here. I'm going to try with a little sandpaper. If that doesn't work, we'll possibly try something else in the vise. It's quite a lot. It's about eight thousandths of an inch at the widest point. just check these spacer blocks that sit between the cylinder head and the carburetor here, uh, not forgetting the o-ring in the middle. Yeah? There is a little wobble. Okay, well, I'll give it a clean up. This is 400 grit, wet and dry, by the way. So I'll just continue that with the other surfaces. That's both the spacer blocks done and the float bowl as well, they look great. And now I'm just gonna check the flange of the carburetor just to see if this is nice and flat on the surface plate. Oh. <laughs> and the answer is no, it's, uh, it's got warped. Let's see, oh, 
That's quite a lot. Technically, the right way to do this is to essentially put it in the vise and bend it back. But I'm just hoping that it's marginal enough where I can do it with the wet and dry. the flange completed. It looks nice and shiny and clean now and if I place this on the surface plate now there's no discernible movement. It's rock solid now. Yeah, that's great. And of course I'll clean off all that residue in the ultrasonic cleaner. Here are the left and the right carburettors dismantled and after they've come out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I also went through and blew out through all the jets, the airways, the fuelways in the carburettors as well with compressed air. Everything looks spotlessly clean. Air went through without any problems, no blockages or anything like that. Touch wood. So I also removed this drain plug here as well. This is to drain the fuel out of the carburetors, just to make sure that everything was super clean in there. And it is now, everything looks spotless. So uh, I think that's it. All the jets are standard sizes. Uh, the only thing that was different was the clip on the top notch, the top groove of the needle. So I'm actually going to put that to the middle setting when they go back onto the bikes, just so that we're resetting to standard settings. Oh, the other thing was, um, yeah, one of these screws uh, looks like it's been adjusted further out than that one there. Uh, so I'll just need to make sure that the, the cable lengths are synchronized on both carburetors when we restart the bike. One thing I am going to do before I put the carbs back together again is just check these throttle valves in the bores. Uh, the one on the left was just fine, but the one on the right was a little tight coming out, just at the top. So I think what I'll do is I'll just polish these throttle valves, make them go up and down a little smoother. And then if necessary, I'll also clean inside of here as well, which means that I'll need to put them back into the ultrasonic cleaner if I do, just to get rid of any residue. Here's the first throttle valve that I polished, um, just very gently. Um, but I didn't polish the bore of the carburetor, so we'll just see if this goes down okay. Um, we use the slot. This was the one that was tight, taking it off. And I can already feel it's, it's better than it was, but it's giving some resistance. And once it gets to a certain point, it, it seems fine. Um, but that should just flick up and down. It does at the bottom, but it gets a little tight at the top. So we don't want that sticking at all. So what I'll do is I'll just give this a slight polish on the inside as well. And you can usually see the witness marks there, for example. I don't know if you can see that, there's a high spot right there. And some other witness marks inside where it's rubbed up against the throttle valve. And the tightening can cause this to distort as well. This isn't, this is nothing. This is very easy to do. So I'll just give this a really light polish on the inside and then we'll try again. It's still a high spot, but it should be a lot better. Oh yeah, there we are. It just drops through now. Okay, great. I'll just check the other one. So I'm ready to start reassembling the carburetors. 
as you can see, they're a very simple carburetor. They don't take much effort to take apart and put back together again. I'm very happy with how clean they are. I'm not sure how old these are. I suppose the most tricky thing was um, these mounting Allen screws or Allen bolts, uh, just getting them past the tickler. You have to depress that all the way to get it through that hole there. I, I suspect the originals came with studs coming out of the cylinder head with nuts on the end, in other words, like that, and they would just pull off rather than trying to get this head past the tickler. So I'll start with that and then just start reassembling the carburetor. I just nip these up, I don't do them too tight. I'll fine tune these later if we need to. Uh, for example, just setting the float level. We can do that later if needed. The bike was idling, it just wasn't wasn't starting very well. Got mismatched screws under here, but I don't think that matters. <laughs> again, try not to over tighten this, otherwise we're back to square one again. One thing I did notice about the bike is everything's not over tightened. Everything's real nice and lightly fastened. It's a sign of a good rebuild. I'm just going to put the throttle stop. Uh, just screw that in a, a little bit and we'll reset it when it's on the bike. With the air screw, uh, instead of going back to one and a quarter, which is what it was, I'm just going to go to one and a half because I'm going to be changing the position of the needle. So let's just go back to standard settings, one and a half, recognizing that it was one and a quarter. And we can always change it when we're fine tuning. Okay, we're stopped there. So let's, just to be accurate, or more accurate, make a mark there and there, and come out one and a half. Half, one, one and a half. And the next job is to put the cap on the carburetor and attach it to the end of the throttle cable. So just get as much cable as we can at the end because we're going to need to feed that through the throttle valve. So just try and get as much cable, pushing the outer cable up, nip that, put it through the cap like that. Hold on to that, get the spring, you can get a little tool to hold the spring but I tend to just do it by, by hand with my fingers and thumbs, just compress it as much as you can. The idea is we're trying to get as much cable as we can to go through the throttle valve. So then we're going to put this through the center and swing it over on the other side. Okay, I've got it now. So I've swung that over, got it located, but before I let the spring go, we're going to put in the needle and then the clip is on the center slot, the center groove. I'm going to put that in the hole, the clip around the cable. Okay. And then carefully let the spring go on top and that's, that's the cap assembly completed. So the next step is to fit the carburetor onto the cylinder head and sandwich this o-ring between the carburetor and the spacer. I put the, the thinnest smear of grease on the o-ring just to hold it in place so it doesn't drop off when I'm moving it around. Especially 
trying to locate onto these screws. Very tricky having these screws like this instead of studs. I'm just keeping my eye on that o ring. I'm pretty certain I got it. Don't want to over tighten that. 